Hello everyone, this is Siddharthan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to give you a complete hands-on tutorial on Pandas library in Python. Okay, so this is the third module in our hands-on machine learning course with Python. In the first two modules, we have discussed about the machine learning basics and the Python basics required for machine learning. Okay, so in this module, which is the third module, we are going to discuss about some of the most important libraries that are, are required for machine learning. Okay, so in the previous video, we have discussed about the tutorial on NumPy library and in this video, we are going to see about Pandas library. Okay, so as you can see here, I have made some description here. So Pandas library. So the main use of Pandas library is for data processing and analysis okay so in machine learning we deal with lots of data okay so there can also be in cases where we will be dealing with uh, even millions of data points okay so we need a, a certain tool or a suitable tool to perform various operations and functions on those data okay and pandas library is one of the main tool we will be using in machine learning for data processing and for also analyzing the data set okay so pandas contains an important object type called as data frame okay so as you can see here pandas data frame is two dimensional tabular data structure with labeled axis okay so these are nothing but very structured tables okay so these are two dimensional tables having rows and columns okay and there will be uh, column names for each columns okay so this is about the pandas library so pandas library basically has two objects so one object is this data frame and there is also another object called as pandas series okay so but in machine learning we will be using this data frame predominantly so i'll explain you most of the important functions that are uh, that we will be using in this data frame okay so I will, I will be explaining you all the functions by taking two example data sets. So I have already uploaded one data set file here. So diabetes.csv file. So this is the diabetes prediction data set. So we have already made a project video on predicting diabetes of a patient using this data set. So you can check that video as well if you, are, if you haven't seen that. Okay. So and we will be using another data set called as Boston house price prediction data set. So these are the two data sets we will be using and uh, we will be doing all the code in Google Collaboratory. So if you are new to this channel or if you new to Google Collaboratory, you can check my video on Google Collaboratory basics in which I have explained you about how you can access Google Collaboratory through Google Chrome and what are the various features of Google Collaboratory. Okay, so now get started with this Pandas tutorial. So first we need to import the library. Importing the pandas library. So libraries are nothing but pre-made codes. So these codes are uh, pre-made already and they are stored in these modules or uh, these libraries. And we can use these libraries for those specific functions. Okay. So for that you need to mention this import. So this will import that library. So let's import pandas. So I want to import pandas in a short form. So I don't want to use pandas uh, in all the code. So I just want a shorter form of this library. So let's import pandas as PD. Okay, so this is the general convention that we use in machine learning or any other Python uh, related codes. So we will be importing pandas as PD. And if we are working with NumPy library, we will import NumPy as MP. Okay, so I am importing pandas as PD here. So you can press shift plus enter to run this code. Okay, so this will import our uh, pandas library. Now let's create a pandas data frame. Okay, creating pandas data frame. So you can join my telegram group I'll give the link for that in the description of this video. So in that I will be notifying you once I post new videos. Okay. So getting into this, we need to create a pandas data frame. So first of all, let me also import the Boston house price uh, data set. So we have already imported the CSV file here. Now we will import the Boston data set from sklearn. Okay. So importing the Boston data. Okay. Boston house space data so it is uh, present in the sklearn library so you can use this for that from sklearn dot data sets import load boston okay so i'll create or i'll declare the variable as boston data set so boston data set is equal to load Boston. So this will load the Boston dataset to this 
uh, Boston dataset variable. Okay, so I'll run this. You can check the data type of this particular object. So type. So I want to check the type of Boston dataset. Okay. So as you can see here, it is a uh, SKLearn utils bunch. So bunch is like a dictionary object. So it contains a lot of data. So let's try to print and see this data. Okay, so print Boston dataset. So this is the data set we have imported as you can see here. So I hope you know that a dictionary contains a key and a value. So here the key is nothing but this the word data and these are the values in it. So we have various values in it and this is the target. So this target is nothing but house price. So these values are in thousand dollars. Okay, so twenty four thousand dollars, twenty one point six thousand dollars and those kind of things. And uh, these uh, data represents various values like age of the person uh, owning that house or uh, the tax they need to pay and the crime rate and all all kinds of data and this target variable contains the price of the data set sorry the price of that particular house okay so you can see the feature names here so these are the different features or columns so we have the crime rate zone uh, number etc okay so we have already done this project for predicting so you can check that video if you want to get more information on this okay so now we have successfully imported this boston house data set from sklearn as you can see here there are so much numbers here right so this you know type of data is not very suitable for analysis so this is where pandas comes into play so this pandas helps us to import this data set into a more structured table okay so let's see how we can do that okay pandas data frame so I'll declare the variable as Boston DF. So DF means data frame. Okay. So is equal to you can use this PD dot data frame function. Okay. So PD is nothing but pandas. So we have imported pandas as PD. Okay. So in this mention, what is the data that you want to include? So let's say that I want to include all these data okay so i want to uh, include this data from this boston data set object so i don't want to include this target or price of this right now so i just want to include all this data in my data frame so you need to mention so pd dot data frame mention the data set name which is boston data set dot data okay and also mention the column names or you can just mention columns so columns is equal to boston dataset dot feature names okay so i'll explain you what is meant by this so we are creating a pandas data frame and inside this we need to give the data we want and the name of each of the column we want so let's first uh, see about this so this is nothing but boston dataset dot data which is nothing but this so you can see here that we have printed this boston data set right so these are the data so i want to include all these values and i want to get the columns name column names as well here the columns names are nothing but these feature names the crime rate zone etc okay so i am loading all this data to my data frame which is known as boston df and i am importing all the feature names as column name okay so let's run this okay so now let's see the sample of this data set. So Boston DF dot yet. So when you use this yet function in a pandas data frame, it will print you the first five rows of that data frame. So as you can see here, we have printed the first five rows. So we have all these columns as crime rate, zone, indus, etc. Okay. So this is how you can see the sample of this data set. Now what we will do is let's check the shape of this data frame. So Boston DF dot shape. So this tells us the number of rows and columns in this particular data frame. So the first value represents rows and the second value represents columns. Okay, so totally we have four, 506 data points or 506 values for a different houses and then we have 13 columns. Okay, so this is how you can check the shape of a data frame. So by this we can uh, by using this data frame function this is how we can load a data set into a pandas data frame now i'm going to show you how we how you can import a data set from a csv file okay so importing a pandas 
for importing the data from a CSV file to a Pandas data frame. Okay, so as I showed you earlier, I have already uploaded this diabetes data set. So it is it is nothing but diabetes.csv. So CSV are nothing but comma separated values. I'll show you how this uh, data actually looks. So I'll open this in notepad. So in this, all the values will be separated by comma. Okay. So this is the comma separated values. So this is the diabetes data set we have. And uh, you can see the column names here. So each of these represents each column name and these are the data, okay? So the problem with this is that we cannot do any analysis if we have the data like this, right? So this is why we need a structured table and this is where we will use this data frame, okay? Now I'll show you how you can import this CSV file to a Pandas data frame. So. CSV file to Pandas data frame. Okay. Let's create the data frame or declare the data frame as diabetes DF. So it means diabetes data frame. So the previous data set we have worked on is Boston data frame. So diabetes data frame, just copy the path here. So copy copy the path of this diabetes CSV and for this, you need to use the function td.readCSV. So this readCSV function will read the CSV file and store all the values in the CSV file to a data frame. Whereas in this case, we have used this data frame uh, function because we already add this data. Okay, so now use this td.readCSV and inside codes mention the path of this file. Okay, so it's nothing but diabetes.csv. Okay, so now let's run this. And now you can check the data type of this particular object. So which is diabetes DF. Okay. Okay, so it's not defined diabetes. Okay, so there is a small spelling mistake here. Okay, so as you can see here, it is a Panda score frame data frame. So it is a data frame object. So you can check the same with this Boston DF as well. So Boston DF. So as you can see here, it is a data frame, whereas before it was a SKLearn or scikit-learn bunch data type. Okay, so this is how you can load a CSV file into a Pandas data frame. So you can uh, similarly find the head of this data frame as diabetes DF dot head. So this will print the first five rows. So I'll run this. So these are the first five rows. So these are various uh, columns such as pregnancy. So this data set basically contains the values for uh, women. Okay. So we have the pregnancy values, blood glucose values, blood pressure values, skin thickness, insulin, BMI, pedigree function, age, and finally we have this outcome. Okay. So outcome is nothing but one represents that the person is diabetic. And if the label is zero, it means the person is non-diabetic. So these are nothing but the labels. So we have two labels here. 1 and 0 okay so this is about the sample uh, the sample of this data set so you can also find the shape of this data set by using this diabetes df dot shape okay so we have totally 768 data points or 768 rows and 9 columns okay so you can also read a excel file i'll just make a text here so in this we have uh, read a csv file right so you can also do this with a Excel file for that you need to uh, use this particular function so loading the data from the Excel file to a Pandas data frame. Okay, so I'll just put it in text. You can check this with some Excel file. Okay, so it is very similar to this. You just need to use the function pd dot read Excel. Okay, so I'll just mention the function here. So pd dot read. So this is the function, and in the quotes you need to mention the uh, path of the file. So file path. So this will read the Excel file, and it will store all the values to a Pandas data frame. Okay. 
So now let's discuss how we can export a data frame to a CSV file. Okay, so exporting a data frame to a CSV file. Okay, so we have discussed here how we can load the contents of a CSV file to a pandas data frame using this read CSV function. Now we, we are going to discuss how we can load this particular data frame to a CSV file. Okay, so it is the reverse uh, order for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load all the contents of this Boston data frame to a CSV file. Okay, so I'll take this Boston data frame. So mention the data frame name name here. Here the data frame is Boston DF. So Boston DF dot to CSV. This to CSV is the function that will, so you can see this here. So it will load all this data to a comma separated value file. So in this, you need to mention the file name. So I want the file name to be boston.csv. Okay, so this is how you can do this. So I'll run this. So you can see here, we don't have any file as Boston CSV here. So once we run this particular code, it will create a CSV file containing all the values from this data frame. Okay. So here you can see that we have this boston.csv file. So this is how you can convert a data frame to a CSV file. So I just download this uh, CSV file. So let me open and show it to you. So you can do this for an Excel file also. You can also load the contents of a data frame into an Excel file as well. So just a second, it's taking some time. Okay. So we have this boston.csv file now. Now you can open this in a in Excel or in Notepad to see how this looks. Okay. So we have successfully converted this Boston data frame from uh, this SQL and bunch to a data frame and now from data frame to this CSV file. Okay, so this is how you can convert this. Now you can also do this by storing or by importing or exporting all the values from a data frame to a Excel file. Okay, so for that you just need to use the function. So like pd.readcsv you just need to mention the data frame name here. So I'll just put it here. So exporting the pandas data frame to a to an excel file so for that so you need to mention the data frame name here so i'll just put df so in this case you need to mention as boston.df dot to excel okay so this will store all the values in a excel file so in the parenthesis you need to mention the file name Okay, so it's the same procedure. So this is how you can do this. So now let's see how we can create a data frame with random values. So I'm going to create a data frame with random values. So for this particular function, I need the NumPy library as well. So I'll import NumPy library so I'll just import it in the first line. Import numpy as np. Okay, so I'll run this. So this will import the numpy library as np. So we are going to create a data frame with random values. So let's declare the name of the data frame as a random df. So this random df is equal to it's the same function which is pd dot data frame which we have used before. So pd dot uh, data frame here you need to mention np dot random so this np is nothing but a numpy library so random dot rand and in this parenthesis you can mention the number of rows and columns you want so i'll say that i want 20 rows and 10 columns so this will create a data frame containing 20 rows and 10 columns with random values okay so i'll run this now you can see the sample of this data frame so random df dot eight. Okay, so I'll run this. Now you can see see here. So we got the first five rows of this entire data frame. So totally we have 20 rows and we have 
10 columns so we got these 10 columns and these are nothing but random values but the main thing to note here is when you use this random dot rand function the values you get will be in in the range of 0 and 1 so all the values will be between 0 and 1 so this is how you can create a pandas data frame with random values between 0 and 1 okay so if you want to have different uh, rows or columns you can change this here okay so you can check the data frame shape so random df dot shape okay so this will give us the shape which is 20 and 10 so which we have used here okay so this is how you can create random data frame now let's see how we can do some inspecting on a data frame so we are going to inspect certain features or properties of a data frame so inspecting a data frame so first let's see how we can find the number of rows and columns finding the number of rows and columns so this we have already seen which is to use this dot shape function so for this i'm going to work on this boston data frame so we have this boston data frame loaded as boston boston underscore df right so i'm going to use this particular data frame okay so mention the data frame name here so once you mention the data frame name just put dot and shape so this shape function will return us a value containing the number of rows and number of columns of that particular data set so we have seen that this boston data frame contains 506 data points or 506 rows and 13 columns so now let's see how we can print first five rows so i have also shown this to you already so first five rows in a data frame so just mention the data frame name boston df dot hit so this will print the first five rows so as you can see here so this is helpful for us to understand what is the range of the values in a data frame okay and uh, what are the different values are looking like okay so you can also print the last five rows last five rows of the data frame so you can do that by mentioning the data frame name which is boston df dot tail okay so this yet function will print the first five rows whereas the tail function print the last five rows so you can see here so this printed us the last five rows of the data frame okay so now let's see how we can get some information about the data set so this particular function will give us information certain information about the data frame so mention the data frame name which is boston df dot info so use this info function so i'll run this this will give us the information such as the number of entries entries are nothing but rows so 0 to 505 so in python indexing starts from uh, 0 and not 1 so it is hence it is given as 0 so 0 to 505 so totally we have 506 values and then we have totally 13 columns so these are all the different columns we have so th 13 columns so it's starting from 0 and we have 506 non null values so non null means these are uh, this basically means that there are no missing values okay so these are like uh, if there is a, a value is not available if a value is missing then it will show it here so like for example let's say that in this crime column uh, 10 values are missing okay so in that case it will give us uh, 496 non non values because 10 values are missing okay so and it also gives the data type of the values so here we can see that here that the value is in 64 bit floating point so floating point are nothing but decimal points you can see the values here so this is a 64 bit floating point values okay so it also gives the size of this file in uh, in kb or mb whatever it is okay so this is how you can get certain information about a data frame now you can also use this function to find the number of missing values in each column so finding the number of missing values so this particular info function gives us the number of real values or number of values that are present in it okay so as you can see here the non null count so you can find the number of missing values using this particular function boston df dot is null dot sum this will give us the number of missing values in each column so but as we have seen this year the, the no values are missing in this particular boston data frame okay so you can print this 
So as you can see here, so the number of missing values is zero in all the columns. So which is a very good thing because in several data sets, there will be a lot of missing values and uh, mistakes will be there. So in those cases, we need to uh, replace those missing values with some other values. So we will be discussing about this in data pre-processing module. But for now, just understand that we can use this isNull function dot sum to find the number of missing values in a typical data frame. Okay, so now what we shall do is hmm, I want to show you some more function, but I want this diabetes data frame. So those functions can be uh, explained well in this diabetes data frame. So I'll just take this. So diabetes df. So let's print this yet again. Diabetes data frame. So this will print the first five rows as we know. Okay. So now what we are going to do is we are going to count the number of specific values. So in this case, you can see the see that. Uh, the labels are nothing but 1 and 0. So I have told you earlier that if 1 that represents that the person is diabetic and 0 represents that person is non-diabetic. So now what we are going to do is count the values based on this particular label. Okay. Counting the values based on the labels. So um, I'll mention this diabetes df you can use this value counts function for this so value counts and in that mention outcome so i want to count the number of uh, zero and number of one values okay so let's run this so totally we add about 750 values so out of those 500 values has a value of zero and 268 values as a value of one so it means in this entire data set we have non-diabetic values for 500 data points and diabetic value for uh, 268 data points. So this is how you can count specific values in a column. So you can just use this value counts to see uh, what are the different values and how many values are present in this age. Say for example, if we just mention age inside here, so what happens is it will tell how many people are in the age of 50 or 31, 32, etc. So this is the use of this value count function. So this is very helpful to count the values based on their labels. So in this case, the labels is nothing but the outcome. Okay. So now let's see how we can group the data based on these labels. So we are going to group the values based on their mean. Okay. Based on the mean. So mention the data frame name. Diabetes DF dot use the function group by okay so in this group by mention the column name outcome dot mean so let's see what we are getting okay so there is something wrong here okay so i just need to mention the parenthesis so now as you can see here we got the two values as zero and one right so these are the two labels we have zero and one and uh, so here we have grouped the values based on this outcome based on their mean value. So for all the labels of zero for all the non diabetic people, the average values for glucose level is 109. So let's not uh, look at this pregnancies values. Let's look at this glucose value. The mean glucose value of all the non diabetic people is 109. OK, so but the mean uh, or the mean glucose value for people who are diabetic is 141. And you can also see this change or a change in this mean value for diabetic and non diabetic people in this insulin value so this is very helpful for us to understand what are the different mean values for each of these labels so what is the mean value for people having diabetes and non-diabetes so this is how you can group the uh, values based on their mean okay so now let's see how we can get some statistical measures about the data set statistical measures So these measures are very helpful for us to understand what are, what is the mean of all the columns and uh, what is the standard deviation of all the columns and such kind of things. So for this, I'm going to use this Boston data frame. So I'll just use that here. So now first we are going to see 
the count or number of values in each column number of values count or number of values so i'll use this boston data frame in this case so boston df so dot count so when you use this count function it will tell us the number of values we have in each column so as you can see here in each column we have 506 values okay and it also gives us the data type of all the values so it is 64 bit integer in this case okay so now let's see how we can get the mean value so mean value column wise so boston df dot mean so this gives us the mean value for each of this column the mean value for this crime column is 3.6 for this zone is 11.3 index is 11.1 etc okay so now let's find the standard deviation standard deviation this is also column wise Austin DF dot STD. So this gives the standard deviation column wise and minimum value. So this particular function which is min gives us the minimum value in each column. So Boston DF dot min. So this gives us the minimum value in each of the column and similarly we can get the maximum value as well. So maximum value for each column. So Boston DF dot max. So these are the maximum values for all the columns. Okay. So this is how you can get the statistical measures about the data. And there is another method. So instead of doing all this separately, we can get all the statistical measures in one go. So all the statistical measure. About the data. So for that, you can use the function describe. So Boston DF dot we are going to use the function describe. Okay. So this gives us so the count, so the number of values, mean value for each of the column, the standard deviation, minimum value, percentile values. So 25th percentile, 50th percentile, 75th percentile, and maximum values. Okay. So this percentile means 25 percentage of the values are less than 0 0.08 in this crime column and 50 percentage of the values are less than 0.25 value okay so these are meant by percentiles and these are different from percentages okay so this is how you can get all the statistical measures like mean standard deviation etc using this describe function okay so this is one of the main thing uh, that we will use because it give, tells us an idea of what is the range and what is the mean value of this uh, data frame so it is very useful for exploratory data analysis now let's see how we can manipulate a data set so manipulating a data frame so in this we are going to see how we can uh, drop a row how we can drop a column or how we can add new column to a data frame okay so those things we will be seeing here now let's see how we can add a column so adding a column to our data frame okay so if you have seen before so we have imported this boston data frame from sklearn right so we have imported all the values so all the data but we haven't in imported this target value okay so this target is nothing but the price of houses okay so the price of houses in boston in thousand dollars okay so now i'm going to add all these values in my pandas data frame so in this boston data frame so you can see this data frame here we don't have this last column which is price so i'm going to create a column named as price and i'm going to store all these values okay so you can do that by so you can see here the name of this particular target sorry the uh, price values is target so you need to mention boston data set dot target so before we have used boston data set dot data to get all those data now i'm going to use this dot target to get all the price values so this is how you can add a column to a data frame and the main thing to note here is 
the number of values should be same so so boston df mention as uh, uh, give a square bracket so this will create a column so i want to create a column named as price okay so this price is equal to boston data set so this is the data set that we have imported from sklearn okay so boston data set dot target okay so this is the price value okay so now let's see the head of this data frame so boston dot df dot eight So now you can see that there is another column called as price. So this is the last column. So this uh, data set is basically used to predict the price of the house given all these data. Okay, so you can see the previous data frame of this Boston uh, data set. So there is not this price column, right? So we have added a new column. So the main thing to note here is the number of uh, values should be same. So we have totally 506 data points. So this price column also contains 506 data points. So if the number of values is uh, different we cannot do that okay so this is how you can add a column and now let's see how we can remove a row and how we can remove a column so removing a particular row so mention the data frame name so boston data frame so boston df dot drop so this drop function is used to drop a particular row or column anything so let's see how we can uh, drop a row first so you, here you need to mention the index so index is nothing but this number okay 0 1 2 3 4 it's like the serial number so you want to uh, remove the first uh, index which is the first row okay so you need to mention the index as 0 so you can see the index here so i want to remove this first row for now and you need to mention the axis as a 0 okay so if you want to remove a row you need to give axis is equal to 0 and if you want to remove a particular column you need to give the axis as 1 so let's run this and see. Now you can see here that this zeroth uh, row, which is the first row, is removed, and the data frame starts from the first row, which is the second row, basically. So this is how you can uh, remove a particular row mentioning their index number. Okay. So now let's see how we can drop a column. So mention the data frame name, which is boston df dot drop and in that mention the name of the column so let's say that we want to uh, remove the column is a 10 okay so the zone value so i'll do that now by using column dot sorry boston df dot drop and in the column variable you need to mention the name of the column so let's say i want to mention this zone is a 10 so you can see the name of the column here and as I have told you earlier, if you want to remove a column, you need to give the axis value as 1. So if you want to remove a row, you should give axis value as 0. So this will remove the zone column. Okay, one second. So it should be columns. So now you can see there is not this is a 10 column. So we have removed this zone column and now we get a data frame without this is a 10 is a 10 column. Okay. So now let me show you um, another thing how you can locate particular rows or locate particular columns let's say that we want to uh, locate this particular second row so second this is basically the third row which is given by the index 2 so i'm going to show you how you can uh, print this particular row using this index value okay so locating a row using the index value Mention the data frame name Boston data frame. Oh, sorry, Boston DF dot iloc. So this iloc function is used to locate a particular uh, row or column. So let's say that I want to print this third row, the index of which is two. Okay. So I'll run this. So this gives us all the values in uh, the second row. So this second row or so the, sorry, the second index which contains values from 0 0.02797, 7.07. 7 .07. So all these values will be printed. Okay. So now let's see how we can lo locate a particular column. So if you note here in this data frame, so we have removed the particular row. 
okay so this won't be saved here so we have removed this zeroth uh, row but in this case it it it's coming again so if you want to remove that permanently you can just uh, create another variable another data frame name as boston df2 okay so what happens here is so that uh, row will be removed and we, we will get a new data frame without that row so i just want to remove these rows and columns temporarily so hence i can do this method okay so same with the column as well so now we get the zone column again because we haven't uh, permanently deleted it so if you want to delete it permanently you can store it in a different data frame okay so now let me show you how you can print specific columns locating a particular column so i'm going to print different columns so mention the data frame name boston df dot i look so you need to mention the square bracket here so colon comma and zero so if you do this we will get the first column so i'll just make a comment about this so what is meant by this particular line so it prints the first column of the data frame okay so you can just do this again okay so i'll just change this to this i'll mention minus one. okay so as i have told you earlier in in python indexing starts from zero so the index of this first column is zero okay where it is okay so the index of this first column crime is zero and this is a 10 is uh, one two three and it goes on okay so i am uh, printing this column specifically by mentioning their uh, index number so if you want to print only the columns alone you just need to uh, mention this value behind this column and comma okay so now so this particular line will give us sorry so it will give us the value of second column And this will give all the values for the third column and when you use minus one it gives all the values for the last column okay so last column values so here the last column is nothing but the price right so let's try to print this so it will give all the values so we cannot uh, show all the values in this output hence it has shown this dot three dots so basically all the values are in between it so we have printed the first column which is uh, crime rate so you can see the crime value starts from 0 0.0063 so this is the crime rate so which is the first column so you can also see the name of this particular column so by using this uh, index value i am printing the all the values in that particular column including the name of the column so similarly i printed all the columns and finally i have printed the last column using the index minus one here the last column is nothing but price okay so this is how you can locate a particular row or a particular column so this is the final thing which we are going to discuss here in pandas which is correlation so i'll explain you what is meant by this correlation but basically there are two types of correlation positive correlation and negative correlation so you can see the data frame here so we have totally 13 columns right so totally we have 13 columns so we call this columns as variables also so this, these are nothing but 13 variables so like excluding the price, sorry including the price we have totally uh, 14 columns so 14 columns are 14 variables so correlation is nothing but the correlation is used to find the relationship between these various uh, columns let's say for example let's consider this crime rate and price so we can say that the crime rate and price are negatively correlated because if the crime rate increases in a city the price of a uh, house in that particular area will definitely decrease right so one value or one variable decreases when one value when one variable increases so this is known as negative correlation okay so like this we have positive correlation so positive correlation are cases in which one value increases if the other value increases okay so let's say let's consider the number of rooms in a house if the number of house in a room increases the price of that particular house also increases right then in that case the number of rooms and price these two variables are positively correlated but in the case of crime and price 
both the variables are negatively correlated so this is uh, nothing but the correlation so you can also find the correlation of a data frame by using this particular function so i'll mention the data frame name here so boston df dot core so this function will give us the correlation value so negative correlation value means they are negatively correlated so you can see all the columns column names here and here as well so all the values will be all the columns will be compared to other columns as well so let's consider this first row so here the crime value or the crime column is matched with this price column okay so you can see a negative value so negative value means it is negatively correlated so if one value uh, increases if crime value uh, increases the price value decreases by minus 0.3 so you can see this positive correlations here so we have a positive correlation of 0.36 here so for this zone column if this particular column zone column increases the price also increases so these are positively correlated so you can see this rm so this is nothing but i think it's the number of rooms so if the number of rooms increases the price also increases so it is positively correlated so this correlation value is very important for us because it tells us which columns or which features are very important for analysis okay so it tells us which uh, columns are related to each other which uh, columns are related to the price of that particular house so this helps us to understand more about the data understand more about that particular features okay so we can also visualize this in a heat map which we'll be discussing in a different video so that is all about pandas data frame okay so this is how you can create a data frame and how you can uh, inspect a data frame such as uh, the shape of the data frame printing the first five rows of the data frame and such kind of things and i have also explained you how you can manipulate the data in a data frame by removing a particular row or uh, adding a particular column and such kind of things and also finally we have seen how we can find the correlation between the data frame okay so i hope you have understood all the things we have covered in this video so i'll give the link for this file in the description of this video so please do practice all this or you can also make a note of this because these functions are very important when it comes to machine learning and data science so we will be using most of these functions in several cases so it's very good very important that you need to have a practice on all of this so thanks for watching